I'm Courtney. We're a family of five trying to grow as much of our own food as we can, and we raise chickens. Our kids wanted to name our little backyard farm, so we did. It's called Heart Pine Farms. If you have a strawberry plant that puts out runners, using those runners to create new little plants is a really easy way to have brand new free strawberry plants every year. We grow sequoia June bearing strawberries, producing a single large crop over several weeks in the summer. If you eat lots of strawberries every day like us, putting frozen ones in smoothies, or you like to make jam, June bearing strawberries that produce a lot of berries all at once are a good option. That said, if you eat a lot of strawberries, having a harvest every year is essential. This is how we accomplish this in our garden, using this easy method of propagation, which is actually pretty fun. Four years ago, we started our strawberry patch in raised beds, and last spring we took runners and transplanted them back here to start a new location to free up space in our raised beds. Since we removed the blossoms from these plants last year, we weren't harvesting any strawberries, which I would like to be able to do every year, which can be done every year by harvesting these little runners and starting new plants. Here's a quick note about removing blossoms from June bearing strawberries during the first year after planting new plants. If energy is spent on berry production, it reduces plant growth and runner production, in turn reducing the size of next year's strawberry crop. These are sequoia June bearing strawberry plants and what happens is the mother plant starts to grow runners and we didn't remove any of the runners last year, we just removed the blossoms because we were hoping that our strawberry patch would kind of fill in with these runners. but. After the first year, we do start to remove the runners or the patch starts to just get out of control. So this year while we're harvesting berries from these plants that we just planted last year, the new plants that we're harvesting right now are going to be in a new location. We'll be removing the blossoms from them and then next year they'll be producing. So if we keep this going, hopefully every year we'll have a constant supply of strawberries. There are different times that you can do this. One of them is at the end of the season in the fall, you can take the little runner plants and transplant them in a different spot and mulch them really well so that they can overwinter. Um, another time is right before spring starts in our growing zone here in zone 7B, you can see that the, there are lots of little tiny runner plants and they're basically detached from the mother plant already. So when we moved our strawberry plants to this new location, we started out with maybe 25 new plants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take maybe 25 or 30 little plants, knowing that some of them aren't gonna make it. We're just looking for these little plants that were established at the end of last year's growing season. They've detached from the mother plant and they're just starting to show spring growth. You can see them surrounding the mother plants in this row here. We carefully dig them up, being careful to keep as much of the roots as possible intact. And you can see how this established young plant has already detached its runner from the mother plant. The plant is established, so it no longer needs to be attached to the runner stem. Once the plants are free from the ground, it's important to keep the roots moist during the transplanting process, which we're doing by wrapping them in a wet towel on a tray so we can easily transport them as quickly as possible. So what I'm gonna do with these runners is I'm gonna take them inside and get them started under grow lights and just so that they have a place to take off before we have a new location for them. So instead of transplanting these new plants to another spot in the ground right away, we're putting them in pots because we have to move them to a totally different property in a few weeks. This is a good way to get them harvested and moved if you're giving plants to friends and family or if you're moving and you want to bring strawberry plants to your new location. When we're ready to plant them in the ground, we mulch around them well and keep them watered to reduce transplant shock. Strawberry plants like a sunny location with well-drained loamy soil that is slightly acidic with a pH of around 6. It's definitely a good idea to test the soil before planting, then follow soil test recommendations if you need to add lime to raise the pH. Lime needs to be incorporated the year before planting. We're using a rich but well-draining potting soil for these plants and keeping the soil line right where the roots meet the crown. If the roots are exposed, the plant will dry out, if, and if the crown is buried, the plant can rot. I like to bottom water my plants because I think it's the most efficient method for both the plants and for me. We're just going to set the plants under the grow lights for a few weeks until we have their new location ready. This year, we'll work on removing the blossoms from these plants to prepare them for berry production next year while we're harvesting berries from their mother plants. Every year, if we use this method to harvest and plan ahead for garden bed space and crop rotation, we'll be able to enjoy berry harvests every year. With the cost of buying strawberries if you eat them every single day, we think this easy propagation method is worth a try.